number one fan site for Impact Wrestling, TNAsylum.net, and Old School Dirty Heels Productions presents the TNAsylum Heelcast. With me today, as almost usual anymore, our new main fixture, my man Hurls. Hurls, how's it going today? Well, I know my fans were very disappointed. I was not on the show last week, but FK9, you you, you took the ball that I fumbled and you ran for a touchdown, buddy. I got to give you big props for last week. Thank you. Yeah, speaking of uh, unexpected touchdowns last week, thanks a lot for uh, coming back and beating me in fantasy football last week, Charles, by the way. Really appreciate that. Uh, As always, I've won both games, I think, by four points each, so. I had a comfortable lead, but I had it done, and Hurl came back and beat me. But this week I go, went ahead and uh, stuck it to Moose Nation there. But more importantly, the Hill cast is proud to bring back the return that everyone's been wanting as well. The new Dr. Style himself, Mr. Numero GQ47. Welcome back, buddy. It's been a long time. It has been. I think I haven't been on since summer, but, you know, I took that time to, you know, recharge my battery. We're in the fall season already, which we already know it's a season of Bound for Glory, overcoats, sweater vests, and pumpkin spice coffee, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Got to get the pumpkin spice going. It is that time of the year where everyone's got pumpkin spice everything. But, hey, you know, a lot of it's delicious. Who's going to complain, right? Yeah, fill me up, also, right? Exactly. Also, as you know, you mentioned, by the time... This uh, We're recording on a Monday. By the time next Monday comes around, ladies and gentlemen, Bound for Glory will be in the book. Excited as hell for that. And also, I want to let everyone know to stay tuned because there's going to be something very special, Bound for Glory-wise, coming from the Heel Heel cast and coming from our partners and friends as well. Those partners being the one and only FK9, our honorary full-time Heel cast member. Also... Check him out on TNAasylum.net and YouTube. Also, be sure to always check out TNAasylum.net, the safe haven for TNA fans. And also, it's going to be in a uh, partnership with our good friends at King of the Mountain Podcast. What's up, BQ? Uh, King of the Mountain, guys. Also, I want to give them a shout-out, too, because uh, King of the Mountain, I always say how big they're doing. They've got their own T-shirts coming out on Pro Wrestling Tees. I just want to congratulate them for all their hard work and all of the – progress that they've made very much well deserved also check out andre corbeal as most of you probably already do if you're listening to this show uh andre what's up thanks for your support as always and of course uh new one i want to let everyone know about is uh tna mafia those of you on facebook check out my boy the chef on twitter uh he runs a tna mafia page go to facebook give his tna mafia site a, a like uh, always getting fresh TNA scoops and positive TNA vibes coming there. Chef is my boy. Love the guy to death. Love having him around. You see him on the Impact Zone literally every time you watch Impact Wrestling. Uh, guys, always there. So with that, guys, we're going to hop to the news for the week. Really not a lot of news as we head into Bound for Glory, except, you know, we have the uh, Bound for Gold match. So number two is coming back. Uh, numero 47. What's your thoughts on the bound for gold? Any predictions, thoughts, things you think should happen? I know they're releasing you know, a couple of names already. Uh, I think today I saw Rock as well. We know Tyrus is coming back. Uh, I think the Tribunals are going to be in it too. But um, I'm expecting a couple more names to be out. But for me, predictions-wise, I know they're hyping up Cody, you know, debut or some kind of appearance at Bound for Glory. So if I had to bet anything, I'm pretty sure, you know, he'd be coming in to participate in this Bound for Gold you know, sort of matchup, and you know, maybe he probably win it, though. Yes, I believe that would be a great place to put Cody in there um, because he doesn't really have a feud right now, per se, and it would get the audience to get him introduced to the TNA audience. Um, that would be a great great thing for him to do. I believe that the Bone for Gold match is, I mean, it gives the other wrestlers something to do. And if you're not involved in a feud, at least you have this. And what's at stake is pretty big. You win the thing, you get a title shot, and you can cash it in pretty much at any time. So 
it's going to be very interesting. Hopefully we see guys like Caleb Conley, Marche Rocket in this. I want to see everybody. And I want to see Tyrus come back. I just don't want to see his fixer promo that they've been running for the last two months. I want to actually see Tyrus come back. Yeah, you know, um, I didn't even think about Marseille Rocket and Caleb Conley, which I should have, as I'll kind of get into a little bit later on in the show. But, um, yeah, that, that'd be great. And, you know, we, we did get the announcement. Cody Rhodes or Cody is going to be at Bound for Glory. We know that for a fact. Um, you know, it, it, it does give everyone on the roster a shot, a, a shot to shine. And, you know, you do get a world heavyweight title match. I think there's only a handful of people that can win this match. Um, you know, if, if this is going to be Cody's debut, cause we don't know if he's going to have a match or, you know, if he's going to be in this actual thing, um, he's definitely a, a name that can win it. For me, if Eddie Edwards isn't in some kind of X Division match, I think he's a name that can be in there. But really, I think it comes down to three other guys, that absolutely, the only ones that can win it, uh, which I think would be Bram if he's still around. Um, another one would be Eli Drake, who, in my opinion, is kind of the front runner right now. However, there's one name that I really want to see come back and win it and get that shot and become the champ, and that's James Storm. We don't know if James Storm is actually still a TNA or not, but that is my hope that the Cowboy James Storm comes back and wins bound for gold this Sunday. Um, so there's only one way to find out. We know him and the uh, president, Billy Corgan, had a little bit of a falling out on TV. But, you know, Hurl, there's some uh, other stuff you're telling me about Billy Corgan, and why don't you go ahead and enlighten the fan base here? Yes, this is pretty big news if everything goes the way of Billy Corgan. If Billy Corgan buys out TNA, which is the strong, very, very strong possibility, I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch because we all know what happened with WCW and the Fusion Media deal. But let's just say this goes through. Billy Corgan today had an interview with ESPN and said that he wants to change the name of the company. Uh, So if he buys it, TNA will no longer be known as TNA. A lot of people view this as something good because they never really liked the name to begin with. However, I don't know because TNA has had 14 years plus of history. That's going to be hard for people to, you know, adapt to a different name change. So I don't know how I feel about this, but it's very interesting nonetheless. I think that if Billy does buy the company, it's going to be nothing but positive. Um, He's got a lot of great ideas, and I just hope whatever name he does come up with, it's going to fit with the fans, it's going to stick with them, and I think hopefully the transition will be seamless. Well, I heard heard this news not too long ago as well, but um, I'm I'm still kind of speculating about whether this deal is going to actually happen or not. But assuming it does, you know, I do sort of agree that there is going to be this kind of hesitation to a name change for TNA just because we've known TNA as TNA for so long. And they've always had this sort of identity problem. You know, we say Impact Wrestling, which, you know, they brand it as the show, but sometimes they try to pass it along as their uh, company as well. But either way, I think that we should just try to keep everything as familiar as we can going forward. But I do hope that whatever happens comes down for glory that we get, you know, I guess the reformation for I don't know how many times that we've counted it on. Yeah, you know, Harold, you said uh, not to count your tickets before they hatch, and that's kind of how I look at it. So I don't know that I'm going to look too far into this, you know, I, I mean, obviously I help Billy Corgan does gain control of the company, but, you know, for me, I, I, it's nostalgia for me, and that's kind of what I latch on to, and look, I've, I've been watching TNA almost since the start, I mean, I was ordering pay-per-views in 2002, 2003, uh, you know, I've been really focusing and watching since 2004, pretty much nonstop, and I say in 2006, TNA really became my brand when they got my favorite wrestler and Christian, aka Christian Cage at that time. So, um, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a bumpy road for me because I don't want to see the name TNA go away. I understand why for multiple purposes and not just talking sexual innuendos there. But, um, 
you know, TNA will always be TNA to me, and it just impact isn't really catchy. But then again, you know, the, the whole TNA TNA chant that used to constantly happen, it doesn't happen anymore. So I mean, I guess it, it's just not it's not that big of a deal to me. I just I guess I'm latching on to expecting and wanting to see something that I don't think is going to happen again. But that's my two cents on that. And uh, Pearls, I think that you you kind of mentioned some other name that. Uh, Billy drops. Why don't you go ahead and um, go ahead and bring that up a little bit? Yes, another part of the interview. Uh, we talked about him a couple weeks ago. CM Punk's name came up, and Billy Corgan, being from Chicago, CM Punk being from Chicago, there might be a little connection there. I don't, I don't know if those two have done business in the past, but when Billy was asked if he would ever work with CM Punk, he said definitely. Um, but he also said that it would have to be something that CM Punk would want to do. And Billy also said that he wouldn't mind seeing CM Punk just come back to the wrestling business as a whole, but he would love to have him in his ring. And he even said he wouldn't mind having him in a creative standpoint. So maybe that would be intriguing to Punk, plus the less dates to work. I know that was one reason why he he left WWE. He was kind of burnt out. But like I said two weeks ago, he's going to need a little break. If he ever wants to come back to wrestling, he's going to have to step away from MMA because it's just, I don't know, I don't see it working really, especially after his first fight. So it's really going to be up to Punk. I would say if, if somehow these two come to business somewhere down the road, it's going to be a long time. And it might be a year or so. But I know maybe Billy Corgan, if he buys the company, he will definitely try to get Punk. You know, I think that's a really big if. Uh, in that symmetry, he said he would like to. He didn't really, I guess, you know, came across as, I want to bring him in. But again, I think that's mostly because we are seeing Punk trying to take on this new career. Personally, I just don't see it happening. I think the only way Punk would even consider coming back into wrestling and joining another company would be just to throw a big middle finger to WWE. Other than that, I just don't see this happening. But I guess, you know, in wrestling, we always want to say never say never. Yeah, you know, I don't I don't know for one that CM Punk, CM Punk does want to come back to wrestling and um, you know, CM Punk also has held this grudge against TNA for years and years from at least what reports say. And I mean, like, it, it's not even the same people that, you know, were running the show years ago um, that CM Punk held a grudge against. You know, like, even when the grudge stuff came out a couple years back, it was still different people than when he was actually in TNA. So, for one, it sounds like he still holds a grudge, but you know, I don't know that he wants to come back to wrestling in general. But the thing is, like, not only does he still have fights on his UFC contract, because this is how I always look at it. Like, Brock Lesnar, he, he won the UFC championship. I'm not going to take that away. I'm not going to get into that. I, Brock Lesnar sucked as a fighter, though. He did. He's a very, very average fighter with a 500 record. And the guy literally couldn't take a punch. So he comes back to the WWE, and they make him look like this unstoppable monster. And here's the thing, you're just making MMA look superior to your product. And CM Punk just went out and got his ass embarrassed. And look, I, it takes a lot to get in that cage. And he, he beat a guy that's going to be very damn good. People just watch. Or he lost to a guy that's going to be a really, really good fighter. But for CM Punk to go out and get embarrassed, to him to come back and just kind of rough, run rough shot and become TNA champ and stuff like that, I mean – after what you just saw, it it doesn't make wrestling look good. It makes MMA look inferior for a reason. And that's, that's I guess, I kind of look at it from an, an old-school kind of standpoint, you know, because I'm, I'm an old-school wrestling guy, I guess. But it, just, it doesn't look good for TNA if that were to be the case. But then again, if it, if it moves the needle, if it brings people back, then absolutely go for it. I just... I don't know how to feel about it, but I just I don't actually see it ever happening. So I real I'm not going to get into it too much. But um, unless either of you guys have anything you want to say on uh, CM Punk, we will go ahead and move on to TNA Impact Wrestling. Um, I just think that 
there's always a chance, and it may never come to work, but I just think there's a lot greater of a chance with Billy Corgan as president than there would be with Dixie. Oh, yeah, I, I definitely won't dispute that by any stretch of the imagination. All right, guys, so we did have a episode of TNA Impact last week. In my opinion, it was definitely a rebound from the previous show. Uh, I was thoroughly entertained. Uh, so Impact started off with the, uh, the Grand Championship Tournament, and in the first match we had Drew Galloway defeating Eddie Edwards to move on to Bound for Glory. Uh, Numero, what were your thoughts on this one? Well, I don't know if I want to take up too much time on it because, you know, I never got the chance to sort of speak out on how I feel about this whole grand championship since it was introduced. I Why don't like you go ahead and tell us, Imro? Oh, no, sure. Why don't you go ahead and do it? I want to give you the time. Well, I was just going to say that, you know, in the beginning when they first introduced it, they had all these rules, and I wasn't really sure how it was going to play out. You know, it was really confusing. I know some people uh, on the Salem were, when they read the spoilers, they were trying to figure out, trying to figure out how the matches were going to work. But I guess once you see a play on TV, you know, after one or two matches, you know, you get the concept. I like the design of the Grand Championship. Um, I like that TNA trying to take this new approach and trying to take risks. But I, I can't say I'm really a fan of the whole title just because I don't see it working into storylines other than this first one, who's going to be the first champion. I think that gives us a chance to see these matchups that we probably normally wouldn't see between these, you know, the mid-carders that I think um, FK9 mentioned this on his show that the matches get lost in the shuffle when they have to be broken up after three minutes. And, you know, it sort of just interrupts everything when, you know, you get right behind, when when things get behind it. So I think we saw that in this example with Drew and Eddie. I think they were putting on a great match. They were fighting for, you know, the bragging rights of being the inaugural champion. But I think that in the long run, it's just going to be another mid-card that kind of, you know, still needs some kind of identity to work on. Yeah, I, you know, for me, for this, this was the first grand championship match that I actually really got into. And, I, I think I'm starting to see the advantages that it could possibly bring to the product. Um, just like, for one, it's not your normal wrestling match because now you're going for style points, and that's kind of intriguing to me. So within those three minutes for every round, you're really, really trying to do some you know, high damage to your opponent. And... Obviously, the the you know the pinfall or submission is still there, which is very intriguing. But now you're really trying to impress the judges, so I think the offense could definitely change. But I, I really enjoyed this match, and um, it was it was really good. And I, I would love to see this match once again. I believe this was the first time these two have met. I believe in TNA at least. So. I thought it was a really good match, and um, this was probably the first grand championship match that I really got into, and and maybe I'm starting to see, maybe start starting to see the tournament in a little more positive light than I did two weeks ago. Yeah, you know, um, I, I I got into this match too because I knew I would get into this match, and you know, my, my thoughts haven't changed. Um, it was. Very good from what I expected. I expected Drew Galloway and Eddie Edwards to be a great match, and it seemed that way, but I just I still feel don't interrupt the flow. You're not interrupting the flow for a lengthy amount of time, but just let the guys keep going. And, you know, the, the Drew Galloway versus Aaron Rex thing, it's a, it's a feud that's going to build to, uh, I guess I kind of gave away the spoiler for the next match, but, I mean, it's a feud that's been building up. It's something you're going to want to see go. And, I mean, hopefully they give like championship rules with MMA or something and they give it like five rounds or, you know, um, five minute rounds, uh, three, five minute rounds or something. Cause I mean, for one, I mean, just give Drew Galloway and Eddie Edwards 12, 15 minutes to just go out there and have a match. I would rather see that, 
you know, I don't want to see Galloway against Aaron Rex, this big match, only get nine minutes to go out there and wrestle. You know, it's just, it's kind of stupid in my opinion. Um, I would just rather see him go and, I, I don't know. I'm I'm just kind of stumbling around, I guess, and I don't really have a lot to go with. It's just, I just feel like it's kind of interrupting the flow, and really, Galloway and Edwards deserve longer than nine minutes, and Galloway and Aaron Rex on for glory is going to deserve more than nine minutes, but that is what it is, and uh, I guess I kind of broke the mold there, but the next match was Aaron Rex defeating Eli Drake. Uh, you know, they had an interesting promo segment right before uh, it actually happened where it kind of made it out to like like Aaron Rex got the war of words above Eli Drake. Uh, Nimro, what would you think about the uh, war of words and the match itself? I liked it. I think um, both of you guys proved that they are, you know, strong on the mic. And I know I, I think um, it was you, Raven, who actually said you don't you weren't a fan of the way Aaron sort of carries his mic with as if he was holding a wine glass. But I actually like that. I think that's a little bit of swagger that he carries with him. <laughs> but um. I think, again, I just feel like this whole tournament is just for this one storyline push that they're trying to, you know, prove themselves as the grand champion, the the inaugural grand champion. But I think Eli Drake was, you know, sort of building himself up when he was king of the mountain champion. So I I would like to see that kind of, you know, character, again, with whoever wins this title. But, again, I think my problem with – whoever wins the title going forward is going to be the storyline. And you mentioned of how they could probably, you know, tweak the rules around maybe during a pay-per-view or during championship matches. But I feel like every time we make these tweaks and changes, it's just going to confuse the title more so than it already is to casual fans. So I want to just see how they'll actually go beyond with this title after Down for Glory. Yeah, that that's a big question that I have, too, because, you know, this tournament really set up everything, but are they going to keep the same format, or was it just for this tournament, or what? I, I, I think they're going to keep the format for now on, but, um, you know, you never know. So I just kind of, you know, I have a question about it. But um, with the Aaron Rex versus Eli Drake, obviously my favorite part was the beginning when they were trading insults. I think Aaron Rex's delivery is more, I don't want to say intelligent, but he kind of goes that route when he's, you know, sparring insults with Eli Drake. And, you know, he got some funny pops from the crowd, but Eli Drake obviously can talk on the mic. And these two, it was hilarious, I thought. Even the pre-match stuff with them was pretty funny. So, I would like to see this feud uh, revisited down the road because I think we only got a small sample of what both of them can do. As far as the match itself, um, you know, with these three three rounds, it it adds intrigue, especially if you get to that third round. It definitely adds intrigue. So I, I guess maybe I'm starting to finally see the positives. Like I said last uh, segment we talked about, I'm starting to see the positives in this uh, grand championship. Well, yeah, you know, they, they've they all actually went to the three rounds. And, you know, I, I'm not going to complain. There's no point to really keep complaining. Look, it, it, we're getting what we're getting with it, and we may as well just accept it. Um, you know, this wasn't a bad match either. I, I also, like you guys, I don't know how it's going to work in the future. Truth be, I'd like to just see kind of like the work chart, mid-chart title kind of thing, uh, you know, which you know, like the old Intercontinental Championship or like the way the television title was used in, uh, ECW and in, in a lot of ways WCW too, um, but we're not getting that. Like in my opinion, if anyone deserves to be rewarded for being a workhorse or their work in 2016, no one deserves that more than Drew Galloway as far as in ring goes in TNA in my opinion. So I'd like to see him actually get the win over Aaron Rex at Bound for Glory, but uh, you know that's something we'll be discussing at a later time. And uh, it is what it is and. Anyways, we've got Aaron Rex versus Drew Galloway at Bound for Glory, something they've been building to, something that was kind of predictable, but who's going to complain? It should be really good, uh, and hopefully we'll get Eli Drake in some sort of a match, whether it's versus Cody, maybe it's going to be in the Bound for Gold, which is what I kind of expect, but 
Um, it is what it is. And now speaking of Cody, the next thing we got, guys, was the video package showing that Cody, don't know what last name is going to be or if it's just going to be Cody, is bound for glory. Uh, pretty much expected, but, uh, you know, Numero, what did you think about seeing Cody Rhodes coming to Bound for Glory this coming Sunday? I'm excited for it. Uh, you know, I'm a fan for – I'm a real big fan of Cody. Uh, I want him uh, – my biggest question is, what is he going to do? Is he just going to, you know, make an appearance and, you know, cut a promo? Is he just going to make a backstage appearance? I think uh, mm-hmm. the same way you see three made his debut at Bound for Glory. Is he going to compete in the, ma- in the match? Is he going to bring Brandy along with them? What kind of system are they going to work around him? I know that there's sort of been reports of him coming in uh, to sort of feud with Mike Bennett and along with Maria. So maybe he'll come in after Mike's match and they'll start planning to see this. So lots of questions, and, you know, I think um, it will give fans a reason to want to tune into TNA to see what's it's bound for glory, to see what is going to go down. What I really liked about this was they're doing a vignette for Cody. Um, They're not just throwing him out there. Um, So, you know, we're kind of getting, you know, a little tease of what's coming next. We don't really know what his ambitions are going to be. We don't know who he's going to feud with um, besides what what we've read on the Internet. But that's what I think is going to make it really intriguing. Um, As far as the video package itself, um, it was nicely done um, without giving away too much. So I look forward to his match. And, and like we said earlier, it's probably going to be in the bound for gold, which which would be fine. But it might not be in the bound for gold. It just all depends on how TNA wants to book him. I, I don't know if they do bring him in the bound for gold the more I think about it because, you know, if he gets eliminated, that might not look too well. But then again, it would probably be kind of rushing it if he won the bound for gold right away, especially if he's not, you know, especially if he's not a full-time guy right now, he hasn't signed the con or if he's only kind of a, a per appearance guy. So um, as of right now, I'm not exactly sure how, how Cody is going to be uh, debuting, but we just know that some way, somehow he's going to be there and that that's going to be interesting. Yeah, it is going to be interesting. You know, I'm, I'm excited regardless. Uh, you know, I, I liked Cody Rhodes. I didn't think he was like this can't-miss prospect and Hall of Famer kind of guy, but I, I was entertained by him when I was watching the WWE. Uh, you know, he was a dashing character the last time that I had saw him. Um, you know, Harold, you, you know, we don't know if it's going to be bound for gold or not. Uh, we just know he's going to be there. If we were to believe rumors, he may show up and do something during Mike Bennett against Moose, um, you know, with his wife, Brandy, maybe Brandy gets involved with Maria and Gail. Who knows? But, you know, um, if you put it that way, it's kind of like, does, does Moose really need help against the miracle kind of a thing? But, you know, you, you bring up good points about Bound for Gold. If he were, you know, to get eliminated or lose or whatnot, you know, uh, it kind of has some issues there as to, like, it's a little too soon, but, you know, if he were to go over and win that thing, it's immediately putting a mid-card WWE guy over the entire you know, roster in that aspect. So it is kind of uh, putting themselves in a hard spot. Is truthfully, if I had to choose between Eli Drake, James Storm, Bram, Eddie Edwards, or even a returning Pope winning that bound for gold over Cody, I would take any of them before him. But, um, you know, who knows? who knows if it'll be a match or not, but, it is exciting. It should bring some eyes to the product. It should get some people more intrigued to see what he does. And honestly, if the guy's going to live up to his name and what a lot of people think Cody Rhodes is capable of doing, then it's a great thing all around. And, you know, I, I know that the guy has a lot of charisma and can bring a lot to the product. I saw that with my own eyes when I used to watch WWE. And I'm excited to see how it transpires on screen regardless. Um, so, any of you guys have anything else you want to share on Cody, maybe on Brandy at all? Numero, you haven't really been able to chime in on Brandy. I know you're a tough guy. <laughs> right. Well, you know, props to Brandy for, you know, coming in and trying to train to wrestle. Um, I guess we can kind of tie this in with, you know, reports of Rebel leaving. I guess, um, I, I, I don't know, I've been kind of seeing Brandy coming in, trade, uh, Rebel reportedly leaving. I guess that's kind of a trade-off. 
Um, Brandy's a lot younger than Rebel. Um, she has, I guess, a quote-unquote bigger name to herself, so I guess you can add something to that aspect. That huh, I don't know how I feel about this, just because, you know, when she was in WWE or she was with the ring announcer, and if you heard that interview with, uh, she had with Josh when they TNA announced her assignment. She mentioned that you know she's training and she's coming to TNA not as a broadcaster or anything. She's coming in a wrestle event. My concern is who is she? Who is? How long is she going to be trained before they actually throw her in the ring? I think they need to sort of build up to it slowly. You know, have her have these kind of interaction with Maria before throwing her into a match. That uh, I'm going to wait and see what happens because, you know, I'm rooting for Brandy. I hope she does well, but I just think there are other ways to sort of build a knockout division other than bringing in couples as a package deal, so to speak. Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously I think all three of us would hope for another Taryn Terrell situation where, we had super low expectations and we were blown away by what she became. Um, Even uh, Brooke Tessmacher to an extent, um, you know, she has some training. She has some training is what is from what I hear. So, you know, it's just, it's up to her now to, to continue that and to want to be, you know, good at her craft. And that's what I think made Brooke and Taryn Terrell successful and I believe TNA has proven that they can do this. And I, I believe uh, Brandy, you know, it may take her a little bit before she's uh, putting on really good matches. But I think she can get there. I really do. Um, you know, I think it'll be interesting to see how she gets thrown in there. Obviously, you would think uh, Maria, her and Maria would go at it right away. So that's probably where they would go first. But... And I was just thinking as well, you know, I know she said she doesn't want to do the ring announcing anymore, but um, I guess that could always be explored down the down the line because TNA lost Christy Hemi. She'd be a good replacement for Christy Hemi. So I'm just kind of putting that out there. But first, I want to see how she does as a wrestler. But I, I'm sorry to that. I think I have to disagree just because I don't think she was really good as a ring announcer in WWE. But that's just my personal opinion. But I think um, JD's I, – I sort of said this before – I think JB's already covering the, you know, ring announcing, the whole backstage interviews. If they're bringing in Brandy, I really would rather her see, rather her play on her manager role and, you know, I guess knock out in training just because we already have somebody filling that role and we don't want to waste, you know, any new potential talent on something that doesn't need to be fixed, so to speak. Yeah, you know, the only thing I was going to say was, like, uh, you know, she did come out, I don't know if it was this past week, I think it was, because I'm pretty sure it was after we had done our last show, but she had said that, you know, she did go through the NXT school of training and stuff like that. So, I mean, the girl should know at least a little bit what she's doing. Uh, but she, you know, she was in the SCW, and, you know, when she was initially brought in, you know, she was part of that development where they were in the SCW, but that was years ago, and I know she's just recently trained it, so that's why I'm still holding out hope for her. I just hope that she can just learn her craft before they put her on in these kind of serious matches. And I know we're talking about her beauty with Maria, but uh, I don't know how <laughs> what kind of matches they can deliver just because of their, I don't want to say ring rush, just I guess their less experience. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was going to go for next, too, was, you know, as, as far as who to put her in there first with. I mean, Maria doesn't really strike as, the first person to go for, you know. Um, I would say, you know, if she's coming in as a face, which I got to assume, there's Rosemary. Uh, looks like she'd probably be a massive mis- mismatch with someone like Sienna, but, uh, you know, maybe Chelsea Green, uh, something along those lines. But we'll see how it goes. Either way, we've got two additions. Um, what was that guy on Whoa, the Tony whoa, Kessler, whoa, whatever? Raven Effect. Raven Effect. Who's Chelsea Green? I only know Laurel Von Ness. <laughs> That's true. I don't – I can – I still haven't got the name completely down. So Laurel Von Ness, I don't know who Chelsea is either. But what was that guy? Was it Tony Kimmel from SmackDown? Wasn't that the guy's name with WWE, the ring announcer? Yes. Yeah. See, I don't think that guy was too bad. But you know, I still love JB. So uh, we'll just we'll just leave it. It is we don't got to replace ring announcers right now. Maybe a commentator 
to someone better like Joey Styles with the Pope, but that's been put to bed. But anyways, let's move forward, gentlemen. What do you say? <laughs> Works for me. All right. So something we do know is great. Uh, the decay with our girl Rosemary came out. So they did a promo about the great war set for Bound for Glory against the Broken Hardys. Um, so Broken Men interrupted, kind of said, tell the decay that they – Exists in a broken universe. Uh, you know, Jeff Hardy was out there doing the fade away and classify myself as obsolete in the stands. Um, and it kind of looks like they went to battle, pushing towards a Rosemary versus Revy Sky for next week. Numero, what's your thoughts on not only the promo, the feud, and our Rosemary versus Revy next week? I actually like this um, exchange. You know, I, we, they've been feuding for a long time, man. It just feels like the feud is something that goes beyond the tag team titles just because they're sort of, you know, tying in everything with the Broken Hardy family, you know, King Maxwell. And I've always loved to play on words. I know they're trying to, you know, play off Rosemary's baby. I love it all. And I think Rosemary it just continues to cut these promos. And she, I, I feel like she, every week she proves why she is the star of the decay. But um, I saw a Sort of, you know, towards the end when the lights went out and we saw Crazy Steve and Abyss sort of strapped down with, you know, Rebby coming out. I I like the exchange. I just think that mm, it's just hard for me to get behind Rebby as well. But I, maybe that's just because I'm biased towards Rosemary. But I'm excited that they're actually letting, you know, the women, you know, get involved in this feud. I think this is something that helps both teams be, because they're both the hottest acts going into TNA right now. But I, my question is, how is this great war going to work at Bound for Glory? Is it going to be, you know, a pre-tape kind of battle, or is it going to be something live? I think there's still lots of questions about it. Yeah, I think to further your point, I, I kind of hope they don't do a pre-tape, even though it would be great. Um. You know, I would love it. But that I think that should be safe for uh, impact. I think the fans, at least, if they're going to do something like that, they would have to do it in the impact zone for it to be successful. But, I mean, obviously we all want to see a third final deletion in some way, shape, or form. I just don't know if I would do it at a big pay-per-view like that because it would just kind of come off like something that you could put on impact and not, not pay-per-view. Because the pay-per-view, I think, should be, you know, especially Bound for Glory, it should have some type of match in front of the crowd. But, um, you know, with Reddy versus Rosemary, I'm I'm actually looking forward to this match because, you know, I always thought of Reddy just as a manager, but then I remembered that, you know, she was an independent wrestler before she came to TNA. So she obviously knows how to wrestle. Rosemary knows how to wrestle. I'm looking forward to it. We're going to get a little small sample of what we're going to get at Bound for Glory. So I think it'll be good. Um, I also wanted to bring up, too, I forgot to mention in the news that Billy Corgan was talking about doing a Broken Hardy movie. And I don't know exactly how he would, how this would happen, but the idea is being thrown out there. And I, for one, would be totally for that. Yeah, if it brings more eyes to the product, then go for it. I mean... It's a, it's, a, it's a positive and a benefit we see with Billy Corgan with his vision, so I'm not going to complain. I don't know if it would be, uh, you know, anything winning an Academy Award by that stretch of the imagination, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, this this final, or the Great War, you know, I kind of said the other day, like, I'd like to see maybe uh, Full Metal Mayhem kind of combined with a Monster's Ball and some sort of thing. I just, I expect this crazy crazy, crazy war for the tag team titles. And I don't know if it's going to end up being a six-person match or not. Um, you know, the uh, I, I love what they're doing. And, you know, I will always be biased to Rosemary. I will always be biased to Crazy Steve. Um, so will my dog Rico. As I predicted, he would. But, uh, you know, I, I still think like, if Rebby were to go over on Rosemary, I'm going to be upset about it. Um, but, you know, it's, it's – Rebby should get the sympathy. Like, she's a mother. Someone's trying to take away her kid. I think, like, Rosemary should really be this unstoppable kind of thing. And, 
It doesn't seem like TNA is going that way, but hey, it's working. And, you know, Numero said Rosemary is a star. She's a star that okay. And she is. Rosemary is fantastic. I legitimately think she's one of the five best talkers in the industry. And I think all the best talkers in the industry are in TNA because, truthfully, they're doing their own promos. No one else is doing that. They're having some bad writer write them for them. And, right. uh, you know, she, she's a star. And, truthfully, look, anyone that's listened to our interview that we did with EDK, or minus Abyss, but with Steve and Rosemary, but Crazy Steve is a star himself. He really is. If the guy, I, I want to see the guy get more talk and more mic time. And I understand, like, Rosemary's a star. Abyss is a monster. He's got the tenure. He's a good talker, a good promo. He does just the park well. And he gets a little out of shine. But Crazy Steve is a star. And honestly, like, <clears throat> look at Crazy Steve last year at Bound for Glory. I mean, just think, what, how much of a leap and a bound has this guy got? Because... A year ago, incoherent, goofy clown, doesn't even know how to really go for a pinfall. This year, like, the Great War is overshadowing the heavyweight championship match. It really is. It's kind of, and In my opinion, it kind of is the main event of Bound for Glory, and Crazy Steve is there. So, I mean, I just want to just point out how awesome it is that Crazy Steve has made this big of a leap in one year, and... uh you know, this entire thing has been great, and it, it absolutely deserves all the credit and praise that it's getting. And, yeah, I want to see a physical match at Bound for Glory, and then, you know, there's, there's not another tag team feud out there, guys. May as well stretch it up into 2017, and they can do all sorts of final deletion stuff with that. Um, does anyone else have anything they want to chime in before we head on to another championship? Well, I was just going to ask, how does everybody feel? Would you rather this sort of be a you know, two on two with managers on the side, or would you rather sort of this play off as a six person tag team title match? Um, well, I think the way they're going about it makes me think it's going to be a six man tag somehow because they're including Rosemary and Rebby and they're starting to get physical. So I, I just can't see this match only being two on two. With managers, I, I, I just feel like they have to incorporate them in the match as well. So that's why I don't know if the tag team titles are going to be on the line. I, I think they are, but um, I, I was just wondering, you know, how do you feel? Do you, I think I think it's great that the women are getting involved. I think, you know, they've proven that how much more they can make this feel personal. So that's why I'm hoping that they do make this a six-person tag game, you know, with the stakes being high with the tag team titles on the line. And just to see you know, how involved they'll get with one another. Yeah, you know, Numero, I, I agree. I think it's awesome that Revy's getting involved. I think it's awesome that Rosemary's getting involved. And when they signed Revy, uh, you know, earlier this year, a big positive was, okay, well, at least the girl can wrestle. She has that experience. Um, to, to, I mean, to answer your question, I'm indifferent, man, to be honest. I mean, part of me, my thought is maybe at Bound for Glory. Uh, I, I, either way, like, I'd like to see both. You know, I'd like to see, and I think we probably will get both. I think we'll at least get one match that's just Hardy's Decay, and we'll probably get one that's a six-person tag team match as well. I'd like to see the tag titles up for up for grabs in both matches, like you said. I think it's great that the women are getting involved. And, you know, I think when this does go down, it's a great war, and I think you're going to see Rosemary take bumps from the Hardys. I think Rosemary's going to give out beatings to the Hardys. And I think you're going to see a black hole slam on Rebby at some point too. I mean, I think it's going to get crazy and I think it's going to be awesome. I don't have a preference. I would just like to see both because I'd like to see how the Hardys would do against DK in a normal match. But yeah, hell yeah, man. Sign me up for the six person match. You know, we're already going to see Rebby against Rosemary to start. That's just, I think there's lots of possibilities. And when it is a six person match, I like you numero, I want the belts on the line to make it that important. But, um, you know, we, we talk about those belts being on the line at Bound for Glory, but there was a belt on the line this past week. Uh, our ex-division champion, DJ Z, retained against Trevor Lee. Uh, in end of the match, we had Andrew Everett come out there. Uh, the beatdown went on. Eddie Edwards came out and made the save. Kind of reminiscent of what we got at Slammiversary in a four-way match, but we also know Eddie's going to challenge DJ Z next week as well. Uh, Numero, what were your thoughts on the X Division Championship match? Mm, 
I kind of have mixed feelings about this. Um, I'm glad that we got the X Division, you know, back on our screen. I think it's been, I think, maybe two weeks since we've actually seen a match, the division actually come on. Um, my question was sort of how did this match have sort of happen? I don't know, maybe I missed something. That uh, I like the match itself. I think DJ Z has proven that, you know, he is trying to rebuild the X Division and make it great again. Uh, I just think that the match was a bit too short. Uh, my concern about Eddie, you know, coming out to make the save and, you know, sort of set up the plan for the X Division title match to happen this week is, uh, are we going to get a, an X Division match come down for glory? So that's sort of my concern. That's sort of what I, I took from the match that happened between, you know, this week. Yeah, I, I the X Division match I liked, um, you know, I'm a huge fan of Trevor Lee, um, huge fan of DJ Z. I thought the match was really well. Um, obviously, yeah, it could have gone a, probably five more minutes and it would have been a lot better, but it, it was what it was and I enjoyed it. Um, as far as Andrew Everett coming down there, you know, that's expected. Um, it, it, you know, it makes the Helms dynasty look strong, which is always good. And as far as Eddie Edwards kind of coming down there after he just wrestled earlier in the night was a little different. Um, they probably could have sent somebody else down there, but I understand they want to get Eddie Edwards a match up out for glory. I just think they could have done it a little differently. I mean, I'm sure they could have given him a little more higher of a profile match. Um, but, you know, if we get a great match up out for glory, I'm not going to complain. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens at this impact. Like I said, I don't read spoilers, so I don't have any clue, you know, what goes on on impact. So, or what's going to happen on impact, I should say. So with Eddie, with Eddie, whoever he's going to face if at, at Bound for Glory, I'm, I'm for it. I just think at this point, if he's going to be in the X division, then he's going to have to make it worth his time. That's kind of how I look at it because he's a hell of a talent and he deserves a lot. So, Raven? Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I was going ahead and chiming in with uh, myself on mute there, but... um, Basically, what I was saying is, yeah, it, it, Eddie Edwards is a hell of a talent, and if you know, like I had said earlier, if he were the guy to go in and win down for gold, I would have no complaints. Uh, I think him and Davey are both more than willing and capable. But uh, you know, you said if we had a great match at Bound for Glory for the X Division title, would be a great thing. You know, we had a great match at Slammiversary with the same four guys. Uh, it's kind of what I think is going to end up happening. I don't know if it's going to be Ultimate X. Um, if it's not, I'd like to see it be Elimination Rolls this time around. I'd also like to see other guys like Mark Andrews get involved, uh, you know, the other X Division talents get in there. But, um, you know, all we know is that Eddie's challenging DJZ next week, and that is fine by me. I'd like to see them go. Like, I love Trevor Lee. I love DJZ even more. I love Eddie the most, but... Um, you know, it was a good match. And also, like you guys, uh, just more time. Give these guys more time. I mean, they have so much they can showcase, both of them. And, you know, like, poor Trevor Lee can shine a lot more than he's gotten to shine in TNA. And the guy's a great, fantastic wrestler. And I think him and Everett both, that helps with Dynasty. I mean, you got to give these guys more time to get out because they could be a legitimate tag team, tag team champions. But, single stars too and I think you know if they if these two ever have a falling out they're going to have some fantastic matches on TNA but TNA just doesn't give these guys enough time to go out there and really showcase it and that's the that's the main thing I just complain about with this is just give these X Division guys more time but you know it is what it is and I'm not going to complain about this match at all um, <clears throat> we definitely have the belts on the right person for the X Division Championship right now, in my opinion. And uh, one person that has another belt that a lot of us don't agree with, it would be Maria Kanellis, the uh, leader of the Knockouts, which I think has been fantastic television, and I think Maria is one of the best things going in professional wrestling, in my opinion, right now. Uh, so Maria had Allie, her assistant, um, bring out two people for her to wrestle uh, for her little uh, open workout like they do in MMA. 
Um, I don't know if either of you guys know the name, but I know the the first girl that she beat is kind of like a jobber in, uh, I believe, Shine or uh, Shimmer, something like that. It was Luscious Latasha, yes. There we go. I knew it was Luscious something. I just didn't remember the name, and I didn't want to botch it too much, but thank you. I don't think she even got introduced properly. (laughs) Really? Yeah, I think they just... I think when we yeah, say, oh, it doesn't matter what her name is, just bring her out. <laughs> and then okay, that was, yeah. you know, sort of it. That's it. Okay. okay. Um, so, uh, we, Maria, go over and then. Numero, I just want to say, that's why we pay you the big bucks. And when I mean <laughs> big bucks, I mean nothing, but seriously, you are like the Professor Mike Tanay on the women's division. Hey, somebody's got to do it. <laughs> I like that. The GQ professor himself. We're going to have the longest nickname we can possibly find for Numero, and it's going to be awesome when it comes full circle. I think I have, like, five names going for me already, so, you know, what's with another two more? <laughs> the new professor getting his doctorate in style, GQ 47. The Mike Tanay of the knockouts division. FK9 and, FK9 and Numero are going to have to have a, a, a debate or a, some kind of a big blowout on the heel cap one yeah, day. You know what? I think that should be a special, like uh, the Pretenders of Debate that was going on today, right? Why not? <laughs> that would be amazing. I would love to give you guys, like, just an hour show, just the two of you. It'd be fantastic. Um, that may so, need uh, to happen now, Raven. In fact, you realize that, right? <laughs> hey, we we got the two people to make it happen. We'll get it going well, one of these days. Heel cap well, Nation, I, if you want it, tell us. Who would moderate this debate, though, is my question. <laughs> I'll come on and do it. Or, uh, you know, Hurls can do it. Dude can do it. Uh, we have someone who we're, we're not going to mention the name until it's full, full circle, but we do have a returning face at some point for the surprise. But, uh, you know, maybe we can have him do it. But anyways, um, so Maria beats her, and then uh, a goofy ninja comes out, which re- reveals herself to be Gail Kim. Uh, Allie tries to tell Maria that she didn't do it. Allie still takes the blame. Um, Numero, what were your thoughts on this entire segment? Mm, you know, I hate being negative whenever it comes to the knockouts. But I think my biggest complaint out of this whole thing this week was that Tina here just sort of spinning the wheel, the same wheel with this whole Maria, Gail. I guess you can throw Allie into the equation. I feel like we know that Allie's over, you know what I mean, with the crowd. Maria, you know, calls her stupid, just like everybody in the fans in the impact zone. You know, but even before Maria started talking, they were the fans were chanting, Ali, Ali. So I don't know why TNA is just sort of holding back from Ali to, you know, sort of make that full-on face turn, you know, turn on Maria. But, um, you know, Sienna was out there too. I don't know if anybody noticed that, but my whole thing is why isn't Sienna angry that Maria sort of, took the title from her when she sent the Yen away during the whole champion celebration. I think that the public workout between Maria and, you know, Natasha, it's just sort of a mockery of a champion that Maria is. You know, it wasn't really a match. It was just, I don't even want to say a squash right call. She did was sort of in the elbow thrust. It was to have Gail come out in a ninja form that, yeah, it's just, it's just been running for a year already. Um, I don't know what they're going to – I think at the end that uh, Gail is going to come out on top of Bound for Glory. I don't know if Al is going to play on the role in that, but even then, I, I think we know that Gail can take on Maria on her own. It's just a lot of, again, doing the same thing every week. I think it's one its course. I think we're going to finally see the big payoff at Bound for Glory once these two actually get into a match. But I had another question. I know we mentioned Laurel Vanessa earlier, but where was she this week? You know, she debuted two weeks ago during that whole Gauntlet match. Why not bring her back to sort of, you know, refresh the fans that she's part of Maria's clan? Yeah, it just felt like there were some missing pieces this week with the knockouts. Yeah, I mean, I can to answer your question, though, Numero, I think I can appreciate a slow build with what, what they're doing with Allie. I'm all right with that. Um, And I think, you know, the payoff, you know, is she going to turn full face? I think that's, you know, make the fans pay for that. And I think that's a smart move. And, you know, you would think it would be at Bound for Glory, but 
if they drag that on a little longer, I'm not going to be too disappointed either. Because I think once Ali does get unleashed, it's going to be really awesome. I think we're going to see a lot of great things. As far as the Gail Kim Maria feud, um, obviously this match was supposed to take place at Slammiversary, and it didn't with Maria uh, inj- being injured. But, you know, now it just makes the buildup that much better. Um, yes, we all fully expect Gail to win it. Um, she's going in the Hall of Fame that night. So it's a big night for her. Um, as far as what Gail's going to do after that, I'm not really sure. But I think the buildup was, is very good. However, this segment, I, I wasn't really into it. I thought the whole ninja thing was a little hokey. Um, I guess in wrestling, sometimes you need that type of stuff. But, I, you know, I, I think the buildup was fine and the storytelling was good. And that's the two things you need going into your biggest pay-per-view. And I think there's going to be a very, very good um, anticipation for this match going into Bound for Glory. Well, I just wanted to you know, sort of add that um, you mentioned that this match was supposed to happen to Slam Reversary and you know, that match didn't have a title in it. I think I definitely agree that this has been a great buildup. You know, it's been like eight months in the running, and you know, Gail kind of said this in an interview that you know, even casual fans who probably knew them when they were you know on the other company, they'll recognize them and they'll say they'll finally see Gail. I guess sort of get her hands on Maria. So I'm excited to see the match. How I'm not sure how it's going to play out, but maybe we'll be surprised. I think Gail. It's just one of those talents that can make anybody look good in the ring. So, you know, I sort of, you know, I, I have some hope that this match will deliver best. I do wish that this match, you know, didn't have a title just because I feel like the other, you know, the other knockouts could have been inserted into card, into the card with the title. You know, we had three past champions who we could have probably turned it into a triple threat to sort of, you know, make up for that rematch clause that none of them ever got. But, you know, I understand with TNA inducting Gale that same weekend why they'll want to give Gale that big, you know, sort of celebration that night. You know, the thing, I didn't even, if I would have been told, I wouldn't have actually even recognized Gail Kim when she took her mask off during that ninja segment. But, you know, it did fall a little flat for me, too. Um, you know, Gale versus Maria kind of went on, on all year. It's just, the thing is it kind of drug out for a little bit and now the whole alley thing overshadows it and you know Mm -hmm. i kind of got the the feeling that you know laura von ness was kind of taking alley's spot as the apprentice or you know secretary for maria however you want to look at it um so that confused me i I also don't get why sienna's not pissed off about maria being the champ i mean here's my thing is that we we have the bound for glory lineup and all guys but i mean there's one knockouts match and it's Gale versus Maria, and I think for Bound for Glory, for Sienna, for Jade, you know, for, for even Allie to be left off the card, it, 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 it sucks. It's kind of insulting. I really hope that we do get another knockouts match at Bound for Glory, and, and that's my thought because I just think at least Sienna and Jade, at the very, very minimum, deserve to be on this card. And even if it's against each other, you know, a, a number one contender match, I mean, sign me up. The two were so damn good, and I'm, I'm, I'm a huge Sienna guy, so I hope she gets on there. But, um, you know, it did fall a little flat. Parts of it really cracked me up. Um, you know, I love Maria. I love Allie. I love what they're doing. I, I just love Sienna, even though she didn't do much. So, um, you know, it, it was just kind of hokey and predictable, but, you know, it was still entertaining for me. And, you know, I was entertained by this entire episode a lot. And so we moved from there, and we had our main event, guys. Uh, we had... Uh, EC3 and Moose team up for the first time as they defeated the champion Bobby Lashley and Mike Bennett. They also teamed for the first time, I believe, as well. Um, I think really the only guy that could have ate a pin in this match ate the pin. Um, what, what were your thoughts on the main event here, Numero? I um, I like how they sort of built up this match towards throughout the show, you know, with these backstage segments of, you know, EC3 sort of saying, you know, you have your eyes on Mike. And I might have last week. I think they sort of, you know, played it well leading up to it. Um, I like the match. I think um, we're seeing hints of Bound for Glory in it. Uh, I just want to see how the, you know, it almost felt like this was the sort of the 
you know, go home show for Bound for Glory. That uh, I'm excited to see what they'll actually do on this week leading up to Bound for Glory. Yeah, um, it was a decent main event. Um, it was rather quick, but Numero, you hit the, you hit it on the head. I mean, it did seem like a go home show. Um, um, so it, I'm kind of wondering what this week's going to give us. I, I mean, I know. I think there's two matches announced for it at least, but um, I'm sure it's going to be a lot of video packages this week. Um, you know, and that's what you got to do, obviously. But yes, this show did, or this main event at least, did feel like a go home, but it did its job. It's selling you on what matches to come on Sunday, and the anticipation is there. Um, whether, I know we talked about it a few weeks back that we kind of thought the Moose versus uh, Mike Bennett feud was kind of was kind of quick. Um, but I kind of think that TNA wasn't expecting Moose to catch on so quickly. But at the same time, he has a theme song where he involves the crowd to do his taunt. So, you know, I think TNA didn't plan that as well as they could have. However, this match is going to be good. It's, I think these two are going to flow real well and, I'm very excited for Moose versus uh, the Miracle. Um, as far as EC3 versus Lashley, I think it's going to be great. Um, with the whole press conference we got, with EC3 winning the tournament to uh, be crowned, or the Bound for Glory playoff, to be crowned the number one contender, I, I think it's going to be good, and there's going to be a lot of intrigue. Can EC3 beat the beat the Destroyer Lashley? Because nobody else has really been able to do it for a while, so... Um, yeah, Bound for Glory shaping up to be a great pay-per-view. Um, very excited for it, and I think the main event did its job uh, to sell you on it. Yeah, I enjoyed the match. I think it was good. Um, you know, like I said, I think the only guy that could really ate the pin ate the pin. Um, you know, and we, we have the lethal lockdown match coming up next week. Uh, you know, the, the only head scratcher there is you would think that this wouldn't you wouldn't want to put someone in a freaking cage match at Bound for Glory. What, what's projected to be what two full days in between the pay per view Friday and Saturday in between the pay per view. Obviously, we know it happened a lot longer because all this was taped. But you know, for a lot, it doesn't. And you know that doesn't make sense because it seems like you're risking a lot of your match because or your card going in there because you have to assume probably Mike Bennett will be on one team, Moose will be on one, maybe Galloway, Aaron Rex. I don't know. I'm, I'm actually, I forgot all about this happening on the spoilers. I don't remember it. I'm not going to watch or go look at the spoilers before I watch. I'll actually leave this to my imagination. But, um, you know, it, it was good, and it did feel like a, a lead in a bound for glory. And these are the two matches, you know, other than the Great War, these are the three matches I'm really, really pumped for. Um, I'd be really pumped for Galloway and Aaron Rex if it weren't for the uh, the stipulation rules. But, um, you know, I don't I don't really have a lot to say. I think... They did a good job. I think that we got a very good show. I'm excited for Lethal Lockdown next week. It's nice to see that the TV ratings are increasing since the uh, NFL kickoff weekend, which or Thursday, which was a Super Bowl rematch, which was kind of expected. So TNA's on a good path. The momentum's going in their favor. I have no complaints. Um, you know, we're getting ready to kind of go off and – wrap up the show we're going to hit you with the sound off i'm actually going to review one night only extravaganza here in a minute but uh before i do that uh numero anything on your mind you still want to get off your chest uh, i think i say this every time the pay-per-view is coming up uh please let's just try to come together and support tna in buying these pay-per-views don't stream it pretend it in with some of your friends because we know that TNA are kind of, you know, in need of some kind of revenue. And at least this is one way that we can help. And, hey, the card's not that bad. You mentioned the top three matches. We also have Cody coming in. You know, give that for glory a chance. Absolutely. I agree. And, you know, I'm paying my money for it at 100%. And I think fans of TNA, really big fans of TNA, you got to just shell out the $40. Don't freaking watch this on the internet. Don't stream it, guys. Support the damn company because look at all the shit they're going through. Would you rather spend forty dollars on a Sunday or potentially not have TNA ever? That's, that's how I always look at it. 
Pearls, you got any stuff you want to get off your chest here before we kind of wrap things up for the Hillcast this week? Yeah, I mean, I'm just really enjoying TNA. It's been a really good year so far in 2016, especially since, you know, the last few years were kind of filled with a lot of turmoil. I would say 2015 especially because we really didn't know what the future held for TNA, and it was kind of a scary time. So it's nice to have a little stability. And I know, like, you know, the potential sale of the company is going to happen for the most part. But, if you know, if Billy Corgan gets it, I feel pretty confident that he's going to do TNA justice. So, um, you know, it's great to see the ratings improving, especially going up against the NFL. But I have a theory on that. Um, It's not necessarily that, you know, so many people are going to be watching the NFL, which they already are. I just think that creates more viewers to come to the television, which I think actually helps. So um, other than that, I'm really excited for Bound for Glory and – I, I think Dixie Carter said there's even some more surprises that we're not even that we don't even know yet. So that that could be really cool. Um, so yeah, Bound for Glory, order it, don't stream it. Um, buy the one night only. You know, that's all I really got to say. All right. Yeah, there's uh, more surprises out there we don't know about. I'll. Uh... Go ahead and say I'd like to see Wade Barrett or the Killer Elite Squad come to TNA, hint, hint. But, um, look, we're going to hit you guys with the sound-off question now. Last week, we really didn't get a whole lot of sound-off responses except one from Vanguard 1. However, I cannot dig through it to find it, but I was ecstatic. Thank you, Vanguard. Um, so I'm going to hit you with two questions this week, the first one being, Gil Cast Nation, sound off. Do you want to see this show? Do you want to see Numero 47 get together with SK9 and give you a special – Knockout show, debate, however we want to do this. Give us your feedback because I want to make this happen. So I want to hear that, and I want to know what is the match you're looking forward to the most at Bound for Glory, and who do you expect to win? Sound off at TNAasylum.net in the comment thread. Sound off on YouTube. Hit us up, guys. Let us know. We want your feedback. We get it on the air. Trust me, I have busted my ass forever making sure I get everyone's goddamn comment on the air when you respond. So give us some feedback if you want your voice and opinion on the air for the heel cast. Now, I'm going to hit you guys with a very quick rundown of One Night Only Extravaganza before we close the show completely. Um, so if you guys have, uh, if you want to stick around for this, be my guest. If not, have a great week. Enjoy Bound for Glory. Um, so we had One Night Only Extravaganza. Started off with Rockstar Spud kind of running down all of the X Division talents. Rockstar Spud got a great promo. He was very good, as he always is. Um, you know, I will say this. Shinron, uh, and one thing that Heel Cast Nation might not know, so the story is our buddy, the Count of Incognito, actually tipped off Bob Ryder about how good Shinron is and told him to check him out. And then a couple months later, voila, Shinron ends up on TNA program. And it's the start of 2016, but... If TNA is kind of waiting off to sign this guy, this opening segment and promo that Shinron does, I think, is probably the reason why. Um, Because he kind of bombed here, but I do think Shinron really made up for it later in the night and uh, showed that he can cut good promos. But uh, So this leads to Chuck Taylor defeating Rockstar Spud. Now, Chuck Taylor, the only non-impact guy on the roster here that wins a match. Um, He has been rumored to be signing with TNA. I'll be honest. I haven't seen much of the guy, but this match was not that impressive to me. Um, he actually was kind of one of the least impressive, but I'm going to take everyone's word for it. But So Chuck Taylor gets the win over Rockstar Spud. Then we have Mr. M80, Marche Rocket, who defeats Mark Andrews. And, guys, i got to say this. Um, for one, Marche Rocket's build kind of looks more like the Samoa Joe build. But this guy has no idea, or not no idea, but he has no business being in the X Division, at least from how this looks. Literally nothing about Mr. M80 style looked like an M80. It looked nothing to do with the X Division. It was disappointing, um, and it was disappointing to see Mark Andrews take a loss, uh, to be honest with you. Jonathan Gresham, who a lot of you may have seen from Ring of Honor, came out. Um, and, look, I'll be honest, this crowd was so dead, it was just it was embarrassing. But Jonathan Gresham from Ring of Honor came out, wrestled DJZ, and this was the match that actually gets the crowd alive again. Um, DJ Z gets the win. It was a pretty darn good match, to be honest with you. Uh, Jonathan Gresham, very impressive. Would like to see him in TNA. 
Um, suicide made his return, and I'm not sure who's playing him. I've actually heard rumors it was Gresham Tank playing him this time. I don't know. Uh, he defeated David Starr. Decent, mediocre match. Uh, nothing really to think of. Here's a guy. So JT Dunn loses to Braxton Sutter, but I'll be honest with you guys. If anyone really stood out for their promo skills and, and just everything, the JT Dunn is a guy that I think TNA absolutely needs to sign. This guy was very impressive uh, from the promo. Fantastic. The match, fantastic. He loses to Braxton Sutter, another guy who I don't know what is doing in the X division, but we're getting the Braxton Sutter treatment here. Uh, so Braxton gets the win on JT Dunn, who I hope to see in TNA. Uh, we also got the debut of Caleb Conley. He got defeated by Eddie Edwards. This was a very good match. Um, definitely something that I would recommend checking out. Uh, so Caleb Conley, and my thing with him is the guy just doesn't really look like a wrestler. I mean, nothing about him looks like a wrestler at all, like his look. But, you know, that could be a good thing. It's unique. Um, but, you know, he wasn't too bad, and this match was pretty damn good. Um, my favorite of the night was Zen Shi, a.k.a. Shinron, defeated by Crazy Steve. And, look, uh, Shinron cut a pretty darn good promo before the match against Crazy Steve, and now we all know Crazy Steve, I'm a big fan, I'm partial to the guy, uh, but this was my favorite match by a lot, and Shinron really just fucking shines in this match, and you see this guy go out here and do some stuff in this match that is just like, my God, this guy could be a star, this guy could be what the X Division is missing if they would actually put the guy on television and sign him and... TNA, if if anything that you take away from this, revive your X Division, bring in JT Dunn and Shinron, please, because these guys would just make everything a lot better. Uh, Crazy Steve gets the win. Um, so he had an Ultimate X match, Ultimate X match, which was the Helms Dynasty defeating the Bromance, and this was really good. It really was. Um, Jesse Gutters continues to shine. He really does. Um, I think Goddard's could be a dark horse to win the bound for gold, to be honest with you, too. But um, very good match, good finish. Helm's Dynasty is fantastic. Um, capped off with a ladder match to grab the X for a X Division title shot, which we know these things never really actually portray on television. I'm glad it doesn't because Braxton Sutter got the win. Uh, again, Braxton, not a guy I really get why he's in the X Division, but that's what TNA wanted to do. Uh, and there it went for one and only extravaganza. I'll be honest with you, I've watched all the extravaganzas. This one was my least favorite. Uh, you, it, I'm not saying it was a bad show. It was a, it was a pretty decent show. It was definitely above average and entertaining, but uh, the crowd didn't do him any favors. And I just, Braxton Sutter and Marseille Rocket, they just, they don't really belong there. And I, in my opinion, it just didn't capture the spirit of what the X Division is about. And I hope that TNA can regain what it was about, especially with the popularity of the WWE Cruiserweight Classic. Anyways, Hill Cast Nation, I'm going to bring back Curls and Numero 47. Guys, you still with me? Yes. We're still here. All right, guys. So we are signing off. Hill Cast Nation, we want to just say that we love you guys. Thank you for listening to us this week. Order Bound for Glory. Please support TNA. Check out Impact Wrestling this Thursday night. Curls, Anything, any last words? No, I uh, pretty much said it before, but uh, can't wait for Bound for Glory and hope to hear your guys' discussion about it. Numero, any last words you want to say? Uh, long live pumpkin spice coffee. All season, guys. All season it is. Hillcast Nation, thanks for tuning in. We will see you next week. Stay tuned. Big time Bound for Glory preview coming at you. Super Show, us, FK9, and King of the Mountain Radio. Everyone check in. It's going to be huge. We'll see you this weekend. Bound for Glory. Peace out.